Hi. I did an interview on Lightnet. So you might want to go to, I assume it's lightnet.com, um, with the interviewer whose name was Zenka Carroll. And it was a lot of fun because it was, I love interviews because it allows you to be more natural than when you even sort of plan. Have you noticed? Questions allow you to simply be present in the answering of them. It's absolutely beautiful. So there's a lot there to take in and interpret. When Barbara Streisand says, there's strength and confidence in being insecure. How does that feel to you? communicate to you. I know being present in insecurity takes a lot of confidence, takes a lot of strength. Everything is a gift, even though we don't always view everything as feeling like or being a gift. You don't have to be anything but who you are, but you can pretend to be, and that's a lot of effort. A lot of effort it takes. Now, what I really loved, though, was um, Jeremy Allen White, who um, we've seen in multiple shows since he was a kid. And he got an award for his series, The Bear, which was excellent. I'm sharing this with you because uh, this is really important. It's really important for everyone, and in particular, for those of us who like to be involved in the world of healing, facilitating healings. Jeremy Allen White talked about always knowing that he was going to be an actor. And now he's really being acknowledged on a huge stage in a big way by his peers. And he said something very interesting. Very powerful. Five words. Remember these words. They said, did you always know you were going to be an actor? He said, yes. And his five words were, I had no backup plan. I had no backup plan. Having a backup plan invites the opportunity to not succeed because we can always do something else. You know, um, one day, when I was in maybe my first year of college, or second, I told my parents that I wanted to be a rolfer. Now, what's a rolfer? Well, there's a method developed by um, a wonderful healing method by Ida Rolf, where she, work, she would work, and the rolfers taken after her last name, Ida Rolf, would go deeply into the muscle, into the fascia of the muscles and free them to balance the body. And I experienced it and it was wonderful. It changes the way you're, you stand in space. It changes the way you perceive because when you occupy, look, when you walk around like this, you feel differently than when you walk around like this. I mean, it, it changed so much. Um, I even had to have my clothes <laughs> retailed, re um, and I said, I want to become a rolfer. Well, becoming a rolfer isn't exactly the same thing as becoming a chiropractor or becoming a doctor, becoming a dentist, becoming an attorney, becoming an established profession that everyone recognizes. So my parents, um, very well-meaning and supportive, said, why don't you study chiropractic. Then you can have a fallback plan, you know, a backup plan. 
I said, all right. So if anything happens with the rolfing, I've got chiropractic. So what happened? My focus was on my backup plan. And I became a chiropractor. It didn't turn out to be a bad thing. It was a good thing. Thing is a good thing. You know, it's our judgment that confuses us. But it was very easy to fall back and do a fallback plan. So, go 20 years later. 12 years later, the healing started. Another eight years after that, making it 20 years, when I gave away my chiropractic practice. What took so long? The backup plan got in the way. My backup plan was I would hire a chiropractor to run my practice so I could facilitate the healings. And if it didn't work out, I could take over the chiropractic practice, find a new chiropractor to run it, and go back to the healings. And that's exactly what happened again and again and again. So one day, in the year 2000, I gave my practice away. I signed it away so I legally didn't have the option to go back. I had no backup plan. And I moved forward. I allowed myself to be my presence, my knowingness. I knew that I was here to share about, speak about healing. And I remember getting into a car that night when I left, saying goodbye to everyone and realizing I just left everything. I had invested all those years of um, study, the money, the practice, the building. I just said goodbye and knew that forward was my only direction. Did I feel insecure? Absolutely. As Barbara said, there's strength and confidence in being insecure. And I was nervous as the S word. (laughs) Um, As Barbara said, strength and confidence in my insecurity. And as Jeremy Allen White said, I had no backup plan and I needed to have no backup plan to step into my knowingness. Why am I sharing this? Well, I'll ask a question that I don't need to hear the answer to because I know the answer. How many of you have studied more than one healing technique, multiple healing techniques? You've gone from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. You said to yourself, well, if this energy healing technique doesn't work, then I'll learn this new technique. And we have a backup plan even for the future of what we're going to learn next. Our backup plans are plans for failure. Your backup plans are plans for your failure. I'll talk about this today, but I'm glad I am. Plans for your own failure. At best, they're plans for you to live your life at second best, which really isn't living at all. I mean, you can live your life at second best, but... It might be fine, but how good does that really sound to you? People would say, I tried being a healing, a healer, but, you know, that didn't bring income. I couldn't support myself. Um, those healing techniques didn't work. I learned another. I learned another. Why don't most medical doctors do that? 
They spent too many years and too much money to run around and try something new the following weekend. You can't learn a new um, profession the next weekend. Why don't dentists do that? Same reason. Attorneys do that. Do you think that attorneys put a sign up on their door or doctors or dentists put a sign up on their door and, and suddenly everyone comes standing there? No. They focus, they work, they promote, they learn to teach, um, I mean, with their, their clients, their patients, they, they share, they've invested, and they're present. If the concept of healing is a hobby to you, by all means, change every other weekend. If somewhere inside of you, like Jeremy Allen White knew, he was an actor. If you have a knowingness about your relationship with healing, have no backup plan. Be presence. Let go of your options, your fallback plans, your plans for failure. There's a reason we are who we are. A story that is sideways related to this. Um, it's a story about Muhammad. And I, I, I do believe I shared this with us once a long time ago, but now I'm putting it in this context. Where he studied to be a speaker, a presenter, an orator. Many times people come to me and say, I want to do what you do. He said, talk. I said, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. Then you're never going to be a speaker. It's about what's inside that wants to come out, wants to be shared. So Muhammad wasn't very successful at being a speaker. And he eventually stopped. And as this story goes... although he had invested 20 years in developing that talent. Uh, as the story goes, God speaks with him and says, I want you to speak. Um, said, you know, I, I wasn't very good. I'm not driven as a speaker. I'm paraphrasing this story. So if you want to step in and adjust, refine any of it, please, please feel welcome and free. But what God was giving Muhammad was an opportunity to use your talents, to use his talents to not serve his ego, which was why he wasn't getting anywhere with it, but the talents that he nurtured and, and grew over those 20 years. Use your talents to serve God, to announce God instead of your ego. That's what he was told. However you view the concept of God, whether it's a person with a long white beard sitting on a throne up in heaven, whether it's beingness, whether it's infinite intelligence, each representation of God, each concept, every example. It's, it's, it's an analogy of just a representation of that. Being a healer to me is serving the infinite intelligence of the universe. Listen, for Jeremy Allen White, that's how he is serving. For some of the phenomenal actors we have, that's how they are serving. For some of the phenomenal presenters in um, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, other religions, that's how they are serving. For me, 
it was healing to share the awareness and the recognition of healing. And a backup plan just wasn't in the highest good. So what about you? What is it that you are doing or want to do or feel that you're here to do? Do you want a backup plan? Does a backup plan serve you? Some of you who have been at our training programs um, that I used to teach a long time ago know that I would share an analogy of a story, shall we say. Um, I would say, I would imagine myself at the end of life if I had done something else, if I had fallen back on a backup plan. At some point when we leave this physical being, a lot of us have visions of what it might be like of what it's like to go to what we would imagine as a heaven. In, in Christianity, there's the concept of being presented to St. Peter. And St. Peter opens his book and finds your name in the book of the people who have died and are there for him. And I've got two options. My backup plan could have me standing in front of St. Peter where he looks at me and says, hmm, we gave you an opportunity to bring about the most amazing changes, sharings, understandings, to bring light into the world, doing what you're here to do, and you didn't do it. You were kind of afraid. You fell back on your backup plan. And I would joke, say, he would say, go back and live your life over 600 times. Well, that didn't sound very exciting. But what was the other option in this story? You brought about a change. That everyone who interacted with you then brought about changes for everyone else, and they brought about changes for everyone else, and therefore you're facilitating healing brings about ripple effects for other people who get involved with healing, which is really beingness and the understanding of it, which I know into greatly today, but it's a concept of backup plans. We're given this opportunity. Do we want it? Do we want it? Yes, Dr. Andres, we're not talking about judgment after life, talking about stories in certain religions that portray judgment. I'm saying it's a story. I'm not saying that St. Peter is going to judge us. I'm saying, look at ourselves, because it's really all these stories are us talking to ourselves. How do we feel if we lived our life? as a backup plan. How do we feel? We have an opportunity we have an opportunity to reveal the beingness and share the beingness that we are. I'm so glad that I've taken that. And there are no mistakes. No judgment, no mistake that I became a chiropractor instead of a rolfer. No judgment, no mistake that I'm here sharing about healing. But I know I feel best sharing about healing because that's my knowingness of who I am. I'm inviting you in this conversation to say, what's your knowingness? And if you'd like to really 
reveal, embrace, embody that knowingness does a backup plan share you? Where'd all this stem from? I happened to turn on the SAG Awards and Jeremy Allen White looked at everyone right in the eye and said that he was here because he had no backup plan. And suddenly I knew this. I'm here to share with you something for your contemplation, your consideration. I don't have your answers. So I'm not getting lost in the concept of is there judgment after life? We know there's not. But I'm sharing that as a story that allows us to really reflect. And it's important we allow ourselves to look at different analogies, myths, stories for the opportunity that they give us to really take a look at ourselves to really take a look at ourselves. It's, it's, it's not about the right or wrong approach. It's not about the right or wrong religion. I love the teachings of very many religions and spiritual concepts. There's something to be gained by all of them. I think if we listen to only one and we turn a deaf ear to the sharings of the others, we're not doing ourselves a favor. Allow healing. Allow reconnective healing to be not about what it brings to you, but through you. Not about what it brings to you, but through you. The most comprehensive healing of your life invites you to do nothing and experience the infinite, everything. For those of you who are looking to study to learn reconnective healing, you can go to Reconnective Academy com, Guillermo Poli and the, the Reconnective Academy arranged the training programs all around the world. Um, Jillian and I share the direct path to healing because these are insights to beingness that allows for the facilitation of the most comprehensive healing of your life, of everyone's life. Svetlana says, I'm everything. I'm a part of everything and nothing. You are everything and nothing. It's so beautiful, Svetlana, for sharing that. We so appreciate everyone here. Dr. Andres says, merging with the divine, there is no backup, only to be the grander self in our human experience, very excellent. At least that is a motion, motivational and confident approach. It's a knowingness that inspires Dr. Andres. Thank you so much for sharing that. I so love sharing with you on these Wednesdays. You know, healing is you are, we are. We've got more to talk about, more to share. Oh, I'm seeing one thing here. I'm sorry, I didn't notice. We'll take one minute if this... To see if Vampirica comes on. I'm looking and I'm trying. But you know, the internet has been a little funnier than usual, Vampirica. So please, if you'd like, if I can't get you on now, and I'm really trying, I'm really trying. If I can't get you on with us now, please join us next week. I'm sorry. Oh, we're going to see you here next week. Same time, every Wednesday. It starts at, it's supposed to start, um, 
7.45 California time in the morning, 7.45 in the morning, 9.45 in the morning Chicago time, 10.45 in the morning New York time. Come join us for Solomon Speaks and Reconnecting Your Life, active healing community. Hopefully someone will put a link um, here if you want to see how to link directly to the Reconnective Healing Community or go to um, thereconnection.com, thereconnection.com, the homepage. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. You will see RLC for Reconnective Life Community. Click onto that. Uh, it's free. There's no charge. Every week as we share and discuss portions of Solomon Speaks on Reconnecting Your Life. Um, obviously, there's information throughout the site. If you're looking to find practitioners in your area um, of Reconnective Healing, you can go to reconnectiveacademy.com and they'll help you find that. You can contact us. I think there's also um, a, rec um, a practitioner directory still on our website at the moment. That's the last thing I wanted to say. And I facilitate uh, distance healing sessions, as do all foundational reconnective healing practitioners. Thank you very, very much. Lots of love.